Now moving on to another class of macromolecules, lipids. Lipids, we tend to have some negative connotations regarding it because of fat and all that stuff. But lipids are absolutely necessary and they perform valuable functions. They're typically hydrophobic, insoluble in water, and they're non-polar molecules. They can store energy as fats, provide insulation. Look at this outer here. It has fur and coating that repels water and elements because they release these um, hydrophobic lipid from their glands and it coats the fur and their skin with it. And lipids are also the building blocks of many hormones and plasma membrane. And lipids include fats, oils, waxes, phospholipids, and steroids. <coughs> So a fat molecule consists of a glycerol and fatty acids. So glycerol is this part here. And fatty acids are this part here. And there are three of them. And three. So this is a triglyceride because it has the glycerol and three fatty acid chains stuck to a glycerol molecule. Uh, fatty acids can be either saturated or unsaturated. Saturated fatty acids are saturated with protons, meaning they don't have a double bond. Unsaturated fatty acids contain double bonds. Uh, unsaturated fats tend to be uh, liquid at room temperature or oils. If it has one double bond, it's called a monounsaturated fat. And olive oil is an example of that. It's a very healthy fat. If it has, if it has more than one double bond, it's, we call that polyunsaturated fat. And the canola oil is an example of that. And some fatty acids are essential, meaning your body cannot synthesize it. So they must be supplemented, supplemented through diet. And two of the known essential fatty acids for humans are things like omega-3 and omega-6. The 3 and 6 refers to, to the uh, uh, third and sixth carbon that has the double bond from the counting from the end. So for instance, here's an unsaturated uh, fatty acid that happens to be omega-6. And the reason that it is omega-6 is because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the sixth carbon from the end possesses the double bond. Omega-3 uh, fatty acids are found in fish like, richly found in fish like salmon, trout, and tuna. It's very important for brain function, normal growth, development, and they may prevent diseases like heart disease and cancer. Just more uh, briefly, more information on Fats, steroids, and waxes. Uh, phospholipids are the major part of the plasma membrane. It has the two fatty acid chains attached to a glycerol. And that glycerol also has a phosphate group on it. So here's the glycerol molecule. And here's the phosphate that's attached to the end of the uh, glycerol. And here are the two fatty chains fatty acid chain. And that is a phospholipid. And this is what makes up your plasma membrane. Um, the fatty acid chain is hydrophobic, but the phosphate group, due to these negative charges, is hydrophilic. And it behaves similar to soaps. Soaps are similar to uh, phospholipids. Cell membranes are the bilayer of phospholipids, and the phosphate groups face the water. Uh, steroids also serve important functions. It has four carbon rings. It has one, two, three, four rings. The example of a steroid is a uh, cholesterol and it's synthesized in the liver. And many hormones, vitamins E and K, bile salts, all are made from 
steroids. And the steroids also form a valuable part of plasma membrane in animal cells. And waxes and waxes are also made up of hydrocarbon chains, B wax, lanolin, as well as wax coating on plant leaves. They're all made from lipids. Now let's move on to proteins. Proteins are the most abundant organic molecule in a living system. They provide structural, regulatory, contractile, and protective functions. They are involved in transport, storage, membranes. As part of membranes, tox they form toxins. They sometimes function. They often function as enzymes. And each cell contain thousands of different proteins. And each of those different proteins have unique structure and functions. And they are polymers of amino acids. And fundamental structure amino acid is demonstrated here. Only the R or the side chain group differ or vary among 20 different uh, amino acids. Those are the only differences. So how many different combinations are possible for a polymer that's made up of 20 different amino acids? That's why they're so abundant and they're so diverse and uh, unique and so on. Uh, here's some of the alanine and valine are non uh, are uh, pop amino acids with non-charged uh, side chain groups. Uh, lysine is a slightly basic amino acid because of this uh, ammonia group attached to it, amine group. Rather. And aspartic acid is slightly acidic due to this carboxylic acid being attached to it as a side chain. So functions of proteins are very diverse. There are 20 different amino acids that form long chain, and amino acid can be in any order. And enzymes are made up from proteins, and they function as catalysts and biochemical reactions. And each enzyme is specific for a given its substrate. For instance, salivary amylase is for amylose. It's found in your saliva. And they, some of the proteins function as hormones, signaling molecules that regulate physiological processes like growth, development, metabolism, and reproduction. Uh, insulin, for example, is a protein hormone that regulates blood glucose levels. And it's the sequence that determines the protein's shape, size, and function. And the peptide bond is a special bond that holds together different uh, amino acids into a polypeptide. polypeptide. <coughs> shape, uh, protein's shape is absolutely critical for its function, and there are four levels of protein structure. One is the primary level, or the sequence itself. The secondary structure is the folding pattern based on the backbone. Only the backbones are interacting, not the side chains. And they form things like beta pleated sheet, alpha helix, and so on. And it's these secondary structure that fold in three-dimensional space to create this tertiary functioning structure. For some proteins, tertiary structure is the final structure. But for some multi-unit protein enzymes and complexes, quaternary structure is required, and this involves combining several different three-dimensional structure. Hemoglobin would be an example of that. There's a quaternary protein structure containing two myoglobin chains. Uh, proteins and unique shapes, if you, their uh, shapes can be altered sometimes reversibly or sometimes irreversibly. And if it's altered, we call that, if the structure is altered, we call that denaturation. 
and changes in temperature, pH, or exposure to chemicals can change the protein structure. It's reversible if the primary structure is preserved, if the denaturing reagent is removed. If it's reversible, then it leads to loss of function, like when egg is fried and turns white. That's a loss of function of egg albumin proteins. And this is why we use heat to sterilize things. Then why don't thermal vent or heat vent bacteria die in the heat? Those special bacteria that live in thermal vents at the bottom of the ocean, they have different protein sequences that allow proteins to link covalently. It's called cis bridges. That makes them much more resistant to heat. And if a unique shape of a protein is crucial for function. In sickle cell anemia, hemoglobin chain B, beta chain, has one single amino acid substitution. And because of the change, typically a disc-shaped red blood cell turns into this crescent-shaped blood cell that causes serious health problems. And nucleic acids, obviously they get, this is the uh, genetic uh, blueprint of the cell, and carry instructions for functioning of cell. DNA is the genetic material for nearly all living organisms. Well, I shouldn't know, it should say all living organisms. Viruses use iris, uh, RNA as their genome, but virus is not considered a living organism. And RNA is involved in protein synthesis. And DNA never leaves the nucleus of the cell in a eukaryote. And DNA, both DNA and RNA are made up of monomers known as the nucleotides. Example of nucleotides shown here. Uh, each nucleotide has nitrogenous base, a pentose sugar, pentose is five, one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, carbon four, carbon five. So that's a pentose sugar and the phosphate group. Um, DNA is double helical structure. Uh, two strands are bonded to each other at the bases using hydrogen bond again. And each strand coil about each other, and which is where the name double helix comes, comes from. And Watson and Crick are the ones who solved that structure, won the Nobel Prize for it. But Rosalind Franklin was the uh, crystallographer who generated the data. Um, we have just a couple more slides to go for today. Um, how many neutrons do uh, potassium-39 and potassium-40 have, respectively? Normal potassium has 19 protons and neutrons. These isotope mass units are much greater is are greater than 39 or 38. I'm sorry. This one has extra one unit. This has extra two units. So their mass difference must be coming from their the number of their neutrons. So think about that. Um, why are hydrogen bonds? and van der Waals interactions necessary for cell. We talked about many, many examples of this. These are the weak association between what type of molecules. Hydrogen bond occurs in proteins, water, DNA. Without these bonding, their proper shape cannot exist. Is that beneficial for cell or detrimental to the cell? How can some insects walk on water? Insects are denser than water, but they walk nonetheless. It's because of the surface tension. Surface tension refers to resistance to breakage at the surface interface. That is caused by, again, hydrogen bonding. 
why is water an excellent solvent? Excellent solvent because partial charges due to what? Water, water's oxygen having tendency to hoard more of the electrons than the protons. We call that partial charges. Uh, explain at least three functions that lipids serve in plants and or animals. Hormones, vitamins, cell membrane, energy, they do so many different things. What happens even if even what happens if even one amino acid is substituted for another in a polypeptide chain? Common blood disorder? Yes. Name is sickle cell anemia. It's called sickle cell because cell looks like a sickle. Okay.